We are past the halfway point of the 82nd Oregon legislative session. We've seen major bills passed and signed by the governor, including that $200 million housing and homelessness package and a $210 million package to boost Oregon's semiconductor industry. This could not have happened without Republican support. The Democrats no longer have a supermajority in either chamber. Democrats still hold a 17 to 13 edge in the Senate and a 35 to 25 edge in the House. But any legislation still needs bipartisan support. Last week, we spoke with House Democratic House Majority Leader Julie Fahey. And this week, we turned to the other side of the aisle with House Republican Leader Vicki Breeze Iverson. Breeze Iverson is a real estate professional from Eastern Oregon. Her district 59 includes the cities of Prineville and Madras. Representative Breeze Iverson, welcome to Eye on Northwest Politics. Thank you for having me. Well, let's talk about the major bills that have already passed. Are you happy with the housing and the semiconductor bills? I'm not fully unhappy, Ken. I think there's room for more to be done. Both the housing and homeless scenario was, were discussed early in the session. Wanted to try to do something collaborative across the aisle make it for the good of Oregon. I think we got partway there. I think what was passed originally was really to deal with homelessness. I think there's a housing spot that we need to talk about still. Well, uh, the governor is asking for $1.3 billion more for housing and homelessness. Is that going to fly? Hard to say what's going to fly in the last 65 days of session. But I will say that we're still missing the mark on how we actually address what is happening in Oregon. And by that, I mean that there's a lot to talk about, about how we, how do we permit housing? How does each community deal with it? Every community is going to look at this differently. And I believe that we should have some more local approaches. The, the conversation that's currently happening doesn't actually allow for that to happen. The dollars that are being addressed or, or requested from the governor's recent request, I don't believe really address it corner to corner, border to border, as we look at Oregon and how we need to, to help Oregonians. I think as we if we if we peel back the layers of the onion, if you will, as, and address homelessness at the root cause, we need to start talking about the drug crisis in Oregon. We need to talk about mental and behavioral health in Oregon. And I do not think that what we have in front of us at this time fully addresses that to, to get us down the road in solving this crisis. Do we even have $1.3 billion in the budget to appropriate to this problem? No. We don't have it. So where do you think the governor is, is, is finding this money? Well, the, the governor's budget addresses many, many departments, agencies across the board. I believe that she has left some things unfunded and she has a, she has decided we should use the, the people's savings account to fund other things. And I, I so at this point, we don't have those dollars unless we, for lack of a better way to say it, rob from Peter to pay Paul. Let's talk about the uh, balance of power in the legislature right now. Uh, we looked at the numbers earlier. Is bipartisanship working now in the Oregon legislature? How are Democrats and Republicans getting along when it comes to getting things done? Bipartisanship is an interesting conversation, and it really depends on how you define bipartisanship. Are we getting along? Are we working together? Are we talking across the aisle? Yes. Yes, for all those things. I think that the atmosphere inside the Capitol is is good. There's communication happening. But true bipartisan would include there would there would be an emphasis on Republican bills as much as Democrat bills. There would be an emphasis to get bills across the House floor that have more than one Republican supporting them as a quote bipartisan bill. And we still don't have a true balance of that. So in this bipartisan nature, yes, we are doing better. And I, I am proud to be part of that doing better, creating a better atmosphere for legislators to work in. I am looking forward to the, the full process getting a little bit more collaborative. And, and by that, I do mean, let's look at how many bills that came out of the different committees and are we working together for true solutions? I, I've articulated earlier that, that you know, in the housing and homelessness scenario, we we got partway there, but we didn't get all the way there. And true bipartisan means we find the compromise in the middle. 
You've got some big debates on issues coming up, including gun laws. Uh, House Bill 2005 would outlaw so-called ghost guns, guns that are privately assembled and untraceable. Uh, you have been associated with the Oregon Firearms Association, so what's your stance on HB 2005? Well, I do not support House Bill 2005 in any suggested manner. I think that the omnibus bill that was put together is is something that doesn't address what I what I hear Oregonians wanting to talk about, which is the crime in Oregon and and safe neighborhoods. And there's nothing in that bill that will actually make neighborhoods safer. And there's nothing in that bill that will keep criminals from getting guns. Well, we do uh, have an issue with gun violence even here. I mean, we've seen what's happened across the country and uh, in Portland, for example, uh, we had a record number of gun deaths last year. Uh, what do you think should be done on the issue of firearms? I think we should crack, crack down on crime. And if we crack down on crime and we start prosecuting criminals, less criminals will be on the streets to get those guns. And it's, again, not, there's nothing in this bill that will keep a criminal from getting a gun. Criminals will find guns. And if they're going to create, if they're looking for, uh, to create a crime, they're going to find a way to get a gun. Uh, isn't the availability of guns an issue though? The easy availability of guns? Again, I don't think that the criminals are concerned about the gun laws. So if if we want to crack down on, on gun control, such as California did, it does not necessarily mean that we're going to have less crime. Another big issue. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Finish your thought. Go ahead. Well, another big issue coming up this session, uh, solidifying our state's abortion access in the wake of the demise of Roe v. Wade and access to gender affirming medical care. How are Republicans in the House approaching those debates? We have approached those debates with with our our thoughts, our beliefs, and again, in this process, I would suggest that the 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 very the very way that the policy bill has gone through the process has not allowed Oregonians to have open testimony in in the hearing. We've had a in the House, we did have a, a public hearing on it that lasted several hours, and there were more people to talk there. And the the way that the bill is working through the process it is now in a ways and means committee and it will not go to the senate side of the the legislative process to have a, a open and, and uh, public process for for the senate to discuss what is in that bill that's that's not that again that that bipartisan effort that ability for us to have true conversation in it is missing We've got about uh, maybe 30, 45 seconds left here. And uh, I just want to ask you about this. Much has been made of the urban-rural divide in Oregon. Uh, you, of course, represent a rural and farming district in eastern Oregon. Are the needs of rural Oregonians being addressed in this legislative session? No. Again, I believe that Oregon is very diverse and, and geographically so. The, the best way for us to address what needs to happen in rural Oregon and around the state is for us to let communities have local control of, of what needs to happen in their communities. We have different partnerships, different cultural aspects to consider around the state. And until we get real about letting communities have those discussions amongst themselves and find the partners that work in, in those different areas, that rural urban divide isn't going to, to get smaller. And I do believe that as lawmakers that are centric to the Portland area and, and as we look at, at bipartisan around the state, the, there's not as many Democratic le or Democrat legislators that are elected in, the, in our rural areas. So, so that divide just grows as we watch the, the partisanship not happen across the, across the aisle and allow our communities to have a voice in what's happening in, in those, that legislative process. House Minority Leader Vicki Breeze Iverson, thank you for joining me on Ion Northwest Politics. Thank you for having me.